हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द इन न्यू सीरीज ऑफ दृष्टि आई एस आई एम ऋतु एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी व्हिच इज आदित्य एल वन मिशन एंड दिस टॉपिक इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम जी एस थ्री परस्पेक्टिव सो द इंडिया एंड इसरो इज नॉट जस्ट लिमिटेड टू द लूनर स्पेस दे आर ऑल्सो स्पेंडिंग इट्स विंग टू द सोलर स्पेस एंड फॉर दैट दे हैव लॉन्च आदित्य एल मिशन सो मूविंग टू द पॉइंट ऑफ डिस्कशन सो first of all we are going to discuss the news and the relevance of the news and then we are going to discuss a brief introduction about aditya l1 mission and after that we will discuss about the l1 point after that we will discuss about the objectives of the aditya l1 and then we are going to discuss about the different kinds of payloads aditya l1 have and then why study the sun from the space and after that we are going to discuss about the practice question for prelims and mains so moving to the news part So after the successful landing of Chandrayaan 3 ISRO is set to launch its new project whose name is Aditya L1 mission and this project has been specially launched to study the sun and it is going to be launched on 2nd of the September from Sri Harikota so this is the brief news we are going to discuss in today's lecture so moving to the next slide so next slide is about the Aditya L1 mission so what is aditya l1 mission so it is a mission which is launched by the isro and to study the sun so the aditya l1 mission will carry and it will see the pslv and it will carry the 1475 kg of space craft to an elliptical orbit around the earth and despite of having huge space craft it is lighter than the moon and what it will do so just like the chandrayaan 3 the orbit as well as the velocity of the spacecraft around the earth will be increased and uh, it will uh, complete the whole process the it will reach to the l1 point in just 4 months and it will study the sun from next 5 years so this is a brief introduction about aditya l1 mission moving to the l1 point so what is this l1 point so there are five lagrange point which is known as l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 and what is basically it's used for so it is basically used for a parking spot just like the land we have also a parking spot in the space sector and in that uh, parking lot the satellites will be parked and they will use less amount of the fuel to be stationed there so this is the usefulness of this lagrange point and this uh, aditya will be launched and it will be stationed at the l1 point that's why its name is aditya l1 mission so this is the usefulness of the l1 point or lagrange point so moving to the next slide next slide is about what are the objective of the aditya l1 mission so the first objective is to get a deeper understanding of the star closest to us and they will also study the radiation heat flow of the particles which is emitted from the sun and they will also study the chromosphere and the corona so there are seven payloads in the aditya l1 mission and they will highly focus on the chromosphere and the corona and they will keep focusing on the coronal mass injection and they will also study that what are the different drivers and the factors responsible for the space weather so moving to the next slide so next slide will also discuss about the different scientific objective by aditya l1 mission so they will also study that why the not so bright corona of the sun is a million degree celsius hot and they will also study and understand the reason behind the acceleration of particles on the sun and they will also study that in how short time they will study the sun and the corona and they will highly focus on the corona mass injection the chromosphere the photosphere so these are the objective of the aditya l1 mission moving to the next slide so next slide is about what are the payloads so we have already discussed that there are seven payloads aditya l1 have and what are the name of the payloads so the first name is the visible emission line chronograph vlec and it is designed by indian institute of astrophysics and what its main job so it will study the solar corona and coming to the second thing the second thing is the suit solar ultraviolet imaging telescope and what it will do so it will capture the ultraviolet image of the solar photosphere and the chromosphere and they will also study the variation in the light energy emitted moving to the next slide so next slide is about the different payloads so among all those payloads we have solex hyolex and papa and aspex so what the solex and hyolex will do so they will study the x ray flares 
and what aspects and papa will do so they will study the solar wind and energetic ions so these are the work and job of the different kind of payloads in the aditya l1 mission so moving to the next slide so next slide is about why to study sun from the space we can also study sun from the earth and we have studied sun from the earth and we are still studying the sun from the earth but why there is a different kind of exploration we have launched that we will study sun from the earth because earth create different kind of hindrances because it acts as a protective shields it protects us from the ultraviolet rays and that will create hindrances to study and to in order to get a complete picture of the sun so in order to get a complete picture of the sun and in order to get full kind of information from of the sun it's very important to study sun from the space sector that's why we are studying sun from the space so this is a difference between to study sun from the earth and to study sun from the space so moving to the next slide so next slide is about practice question for prelims consider the following statement regarding aditya l1 mission the first statement it, it is an initiative of drdo the second is it is india's first mission to the sun which of the statement given above is are correct your options are one only two only both one and two neither one not two you have to answer this in the comment section moving to the mains part so the mains is india has the potential to be the next space hub of the world analyze so first of all you have to give brief background of that how india is contributing to the space world and from where it has started and from when it has started so you have to give brief introduction that since independence and before independence we are active in the space arena and we want to explore ex space arena and we have many examples just like kalpana chawla apj abdul kalam we have many hero and heroines who can be looked for for the space inspiration so this can be your intro and then how, what are the achievements of india's and how it will become the next space hub so we can say that you know istro is one of the powerful space agencies of the world so you can write the achievement of the istro that how in short budget istro is trying to maintain and it is launching big missions recently we have become successful in landing of the moon and we are the first one who has landed on the south pole of the moon so you can write such kind of experiments which has been carried by the istro in short amount in short time so how istro is you know contributing to the space world on the other hand the country is also trying to expand its wing in the private sector and it is inviting private sector to collaborate in the space sector and they will going to launch new space missions in collaboration with the private sector so these are the new initiatives which is taken by the government of india the government of india is also trying to expand its budget allocation women are also participating in it so but here they are asking the analyze so you have to also write the loopholes of it that what are the loopholes of this sector the first loophole is that awareness among the people that so many of this country are not scientifically aware and they don't know the purpose of the chandrayaan 3 aditya l1 mission so it's very important that people and the masses should be aware about the scientific objective and scientific mission which isro and other space agencies are carrying it and the second thing you have to also write down about the budget allocation that we have very less budget allocation for the space sector and the third thing that participation of the women the women are highly underrepresented in the space sector so it's very important that involvement of women should be there so that more participation could ensure a better environment and the better research and the better development so that's it for today's lecture i hope you like this lecture if you have any questions related to this lecture kindly ask in the comment section thank you